Hello folks, Aaronet14 here with a PS3 modding video part 1. On this video we'll be testing out the PS3 and tearing it down and washing all the components. So I bought this PS3 locally and for an undisclosed price but it was a very good price so I couldn't say no. So here it is. This PS3, the owner said to me it's also modded and also it has been serviced by him. Let's see if that's true. Right now I'm looking at the top here, it is scuffed and it has grime so this was not taken care of by a loving person or family. So I'm gonna, I'm going to turn it around looking at the back here with sauce where the power supply lives. There is some grime in the grills there, so that's not a good sign. And the uh, intake on the sides looks like they have some grime and dust bunnies there. And uh, also with the intake on the front. So right now I'm going to plug in the PS3, hook up my computer to it so we can caption the video, capture the video, and also put uh, a game in. This PS3 came uh, with a wired PS4 slash PS3 controller, 2 meters of cord, cool. So let's get into the PS3 testing part of things. Powering on the system, inserting uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim into the PS3. It is booting up, and we do see that it does have that hidden logo there, this little egg. So the system is modded, and this mod is a soft mod. It means you have to activate it every time you turn it on. Not a big deal. And the game pops up. Skyrim. This is perfect. So let's test it out. So this machine is already sold to a different customer. So this the series of these videos will be entailing um, uh, uh, doing window mod on here. Then we're gonna put some LED lights in here. So here do RBG, and also we'll be upgrading to a bigger hard drive because they asked for a one terabyte hard drive. So we're at the start menu and I'm noticing that there is no installation of the game uh, main, uh, screen. So this means this game has been installed on this console before, which is great. I'll take it. It means less time watching that bar go across the screen to 100%. So now we're loading the game. Like I said, I'm going to show you all the steps to mod in this PS3. When we're done with this PS3, it's not going to look stock, it's going to look pretty nice. And here we go, this game started. Skyrim. This is, we're not going to go too far into the gameplay here, we're just going to stay on the card as we're going towards the prison. I'm going to look around to see if I can find any artifact here. Oh, the GPU is now pretty glitching. The CPU. And as I look around, the airplane is smooth. And, um, nothing looks uh, out of the you are finally so, awake. At this point, you were trying to cross the border, right? You walked right into that imperial ambush, same as us, and that thief over there. Damn you, Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. We're going to eject the game and uh, insert it a few times, you know, make sure the 
the Blu-ray drive is functioning, not just a one-off chance it worked. So now we're back to the, uh, the home screen. So I ejected the game and popped it back in, and it pops back up, so that's great. And eject again, insert. It's reading, game pops up. Great. Eject. Insert. I do have to note that when I insert the game, it's very weak in accepting the disk into the drive. Okay, it just keeps on popping up as I eject it and insert it again. So the Blu-ray drive does is in needing of a really good uh, servicing. Now I power down the PS3. We're gonna get started tearing down the PS3. So we're gonna disconnect power and HDMI, and also we we'll disconnect the cord controller. Right now you just see me coming back from my office with the game case for the game. The game is back in its case, so it's nice and safe. So power has been disconnected and also the HDMI has been disconnected from the machine. We're going to do a visual inspection. First thing we're taking off here is the T9 security torque screws on the disk drive. There are three of them. One. Putting off to the side. Two. Putting it off to the side. And last but not least, the third one. And I'm putting it off to the side. Now we're going to be popping off the hard drive uh, covers for the screw. screw. Then the the uh, inlaid uh, covers for the screws and the feets for the screws on the bottom of the PS3. Starting off with a hard drive cover and work my way all around the system from that disc tray to the back of the side. I do have to stress when you do take off your hard drive cover, remove the screw first. If you don't, you'll break the clips and break the screw hole on the hard drive cover. And then it, when you go to move your console, the cover will always fall off. I've seen it happen countless times to other clients' PS3s. They have done some servicing on there or upgrade the hard drive to a bigger one and they ask me, can you fix this? I was like, no, you need a new part. So yeah. So now we're going to switch over to taking out the screws. Starting with the hard drive screw, which is the blue screw. Just take your time, it comes out. It's a metal biting screw, so it does bite into the top RFI shielding cage. After that's been removed, you can slide out your hard drive cover and pull out. See, so I'm sliding off to the side and I'm pulling straight out. I'm looking at this, only one clip is broken, which is amazing, as you know, I've seen it down to just one clip remaining, and there are four of them are being broken, so, yeah, just take your time with the hard drive cover, it comes out. Now we're tackling the, the long plastic threaded screws that screw into the top case. There are seven of them, we're on screw one, it's out already, so we're on the second screw already. 
all of the uh, screws that you're taking out now are the same size, so just keep note of that and put them somewhere safe. Now we're down to two screws remaining of the seven. Last but not least, seven screw is coming out now. Now we flip the console over. And this is a really important step you have to follow. You don't lift from the front, or you won't lift straight up. You're going to lift from the back to the front, like a book. So that will put from the back to the front, and off it comes. There is some half clasp uh, clips there that clip into the front to lock it in. So you have to open it from the back to the front, and when you put this in, you put your front on those clips that lock into the front, latch them in, and you close it down from the front to the back. Here comes uh, my supervisor today, which is Rosa. So right now I just connected the 5 volt rail and also the AC wall adapter that goes to the universal adapter. And screwing the screws on both sides of the power supply. Now I'm going to I have both screws out. I'm going to pull straight up on the power supply with some medium tension. It will come out, no problem. There you go, a clean pull. Always make sure you have no cords connected to the machine. Now we're with an overhead view and I'm looking at this Bluetooth or Wi-Fi antenna connection. And it's broken. The white antenna is broken. I'm not too happy about that, but it is what it is. It broke right on that um, inlay for the antenna connection ports on the main board there. So, this is what you can expect when you buy a console from a guy that has done servicing on, his, on the console himself. My guess is you pulled it out without removing the power supply. Right now I'm latching the, the ribbon cable that goes towards the daughter board on the Blu-ray drive. There's a little clip there you pull up with your fingernail. And now that, that, that ribbon cable is free to come. Now I'm going to work on the 5 volt rails for the Blu-ray drive. I'm going to disconnect it from the main drive, from the main board. Pull straight up, gently, out it comes. Pull straight up on the ribbon cable itself. Gently pull up and it will come out with no issues. And last but not least is the screw by the ribbon cable that goes to the main board. So. This console right off the bat, I can tell it's version one of the slim lineup because it has a daughter board on this machine. It's not like version two or version three where it has plug and play um, onto the main board. So right now I'm just taking out the eject and power on button so I can move the Blu-ray drive out of the console. This is the last step that holds in the Blu-ray drive from flopping around in the machine. It's probably up on one side and give it a little, there it goes, pops right out. It is set that off to the side. There's lots of ribbon cable for that. 
You're going to pick up from the sideways and pry out, and out she comes. Turn this off to the side. Now disconnecting the power and eject button. Just pulls up. There you go. Setting that off to the side. Next thing we'll be removing is the universal wall adapter. This is free to come out. There's no screws holding it down. So that just pops out. Next will be the fan. First thing we do is take out the fan connection from the main board. I pull straight out, straightly. Don't pull too hard. I always uh, firmly press the cords that the, the, the wires that go to the to the connection and pull. Now I'm unlatching the fan wires from the fan housing catch to keep them nice and tidy. Now we're removing the two screws that hold in the fan to the housing. This is the last screw coming out. Now your fan is free and clear to come off the housing. So this is from a smoker's home. There is some discoloration on the on the aluminum uh, heat sink there, and also I learned, I have noticed some discoloration on the Blu-ray drive itself. I'm just putting the screws back on the housing. So when you do when you do paint this. It will stand out more, better, and be a color match to the paint. So right now we're going to take out the screws on the main board. So we have two silver ones and three black ones. We're taking out the first one right there by the wall, universal wall adapter. And the second one will be by the clock battery. And the next one will be by the hard drive tray caddy. All three of these screws are the same size, so they can be grouped together. Next is the two silver ones. These are a more um, shorter screw and more shallow, so they had to bite it into the plastic that was by the hard drive caddy itself, so they're shallow. So keep these guys separate. And please don't forget to unplug the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna like I didn't. So it's an honest mistake. See? And when you do take your antenna off, when you do take your, your main board out of your uh, shell there, the bottom half of the shell, do the hinge system method. So aisle ports on the back, you pull from the front to the back. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm unrouting the antenna so I can pull out the main board. Working away from the front to the back with the book and out she comes, being clear. So the inside is pretty clean, just the outside is dirty. So right now I'm unscrewing the screws for the antenna, for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So with that broken uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth antenna, that white one, I might repair it or I might replace it, I'm not quite sure yet. you will find out in the next video on that decision. And I'm going to put the screws back on the bottom case for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. It's not like you're going to be able to see them, but if you do, I'd rather them have the same uh, white paint as the inside uh, shell will have. So 
see what happens. Now that the screw the screws have been put back on the bottom half of the shell, we're going to focus on taking apart the, the shell here for the GPU and CPU off the heatsink. This is a reshoot here because my camera got knocked over by my cat. So this is a reshoot on this, uh, on this uh, step here. And uh, the heat sink and the CPU and GPU has uh, also been cleaned by this point. So there is no thermal paste on here. And we did not run the system without no thermal paste. There was thermal paste when I did clean it off and it was um, caked on there, let's put it that way. The owner did service his console. He used um, original thermal paste and some newer white thermal paste and just left the old thermal paste on there. So it was quite the mess. So right now I'm taking out the four metal screws that holds the, the bottom RF shielding onto the the RF sh or the top cage of the RF shielding. So there's four screws. I forgot to take out one screw by the CPU. So right now I'm screwing and unscrewing the, the CPU. No, I'm not. I'm showing you where the clamps are for the screws for the CPU. So this is the GPU I'm, I'm doing right now. So these four black screws are coming out right now, they're the same. You can only screw these guys into the heat sink. So right now I'm taking up the screw. And I do give the, the I do give the clamps a little more uh, tension when I take them out. Give it a little bend, not too much. These ones are very easy to bend. Not like the launch edition and the fat ones where they're they're like real stainless steel clamps. I think these guys are only aluminum with that 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 spring there so taking out the last uh, uh, screw on the RF shielding there so now when I take these this the CPU clamp off I can pull away safely putting this off to the side and give that CPU clamp a little bend. There we go. Now we can lift away the RF shielding. To re reveal a clean looking uh, PS3 slim motherboard. So when you do pull the off your motherboard from the heat sink, Start, start with the top and work your way to the bottom. Put some medium tension. Don't put heavy tension or else you'll break the traces on the board and you don't want that. So I'm applying some tension, gently lifting up and off it comes. You hear two pops. That means CPU and GPU are free from the heat sink. Make sure you disconnect your five volt rail. If it gets caught up on coming through the RF, uh, uh, RF shielding uh, cage there. Now we're going to remove this heat sink from the RF uh, shielding cage here. So there's four screws. I'm going to start with the inside, work outside to the inside, and do the same step on the top.
note that the RF shielding has been removed from the heat sink. This off to the side. And now we're going to start washing our components. Here we are at the kitchen sink. I'm going to start washing the, the shell and also the heat sink and uh, top and bottom are off shielding for the board as well as disassemble the Blu-ray drive and wash all the plastics and gears and uh, rubber feet there as also disassemble the power supply. So right now I'm just gently rinsing off the uh, RF shielding cages there with some hot soapy water. We're in the sink there. Right now I'm washing out the fan with hot soapy water. This is the way I wash my fans out on my consoles that I sell and keep. So I don't put water inside the center hub where the where the armature lives and uh, the control board. I just wash the fins with the hot soapy water and then afterwards I will flush out the water with isopropyl alcohol. 99.9% and I haven't had an issue with that yet. It's the only way you can get it clean pretty fast and without taking your time. It is a cheat and I use it to my advantage. So now that I scrubbed the fins off and the top, I'm just running it, the fins over the tap there just to spin off all the junk and debris. Uh, debris. I'm going off there to grab my isopropyl alcohol to flush out the center hub, dry off the fan, the fins on the fan blade or that way. So right now I'm putting the isopropyl alcohol into the into the control board where the wires go into the center hub. So I'm just flushing the the alcohol into the hub there just to flush out the water. And put it off to the side, let air dry, off gas. And another thing is, if you're going to do this this way and are using a sink, a kitchen sink, don't flush that it out where your, the water is. Flush it out where the drain is on the other side of the sink. If you put this on hot water, it's going to off gas really quickly and your whole house will smell like isopropyl alcohol. So now we're scrubbing off the bottom of the shell, getting make sure and getting the bristles into the intake venter, getting it all decreased and all the scum and junk off. And get make sure it gets all ready for prep for painting. Because um, this won't be black when I'm done with it, it'll be a different color.
direction this was the top shell of the PS3. Working on the earth shielding now, top cage. So the earth shielding on the top cage will be painted too because it's visible through the window a bit. So we're making everything look uniform. I'm vigorously trying to scrub out the tar off the board, which not the board, the shielding there, but it doesn't, it, it never, almost never comes out all like 100%. So, you may have to use your isopropyl alcohol or something more uh, heavier than the isopropyl alcohol. Now I'm working on the uh, uh, heat sink. Making sure I rinse out the fins, rinse out the spot with fan sets. Now I'm rinsing off the universal ball adapter on the PS3. Or plugs into the power supply. The bottom shielding is done now. Now I'm just giving this a rinse off. Top shell has been rinsed off, cleaned. Working on the bottom shell. Working on the universal wall adapter on PS3 that plugs into the power supply. I'll be back with some paper towel to dry off the, that hop and bottom shell.
It's right off the top there. So Now let's clean out the fan there. I'm also going to straighten out the wires there. So I'm going to redo, put this back in. And it looks clean looking. And I'm just spinning off the excessive water flash off the hole there, or on the blades there. Now I'm scrubbing and wiping down the crevice between the blades and the housing of the fan itself. And I do find some really bad greenish grime, so it's like, I guess it's like, it's like tar and maybe What you can also see me do is just uh, straighten out the fire cycle to the fan itself.
and just waving down the earth shielding. The top and bottom also will be waving down the heat sink. I have a very interesting way of um, getting the other uh, hard to reach spots of the water on the top of the shell. I like to swing uh, the shell back and forth. I let the typical forest do their work for me. So now I put the PS3 um, shell on its, on, its box, on its top. We're facing the the bottom of the PS3. I'm going to take out the stickers. So I'm going to remove the PS3 uh, slim uh, sticker card there. And with the help of isopropyl alcohol. I'll let it do its job and grab a sharp knife and I'll pry up and uh, slice gently on the loosened adhesive and it does take some time but you know what, it's the best way to go.
Now I'm just cleaning off the uh, uh, leftover adhesive that was on the sticker that never got cut, that never came off with the sticker. Using some uh, IPA. I'm working on the back sticker. The back sticker does have relief cuts on the sticker itself. There's two relief cuts on both ends of the sticker. This has been right uh, tampering with the serial number on the back of the PS3. Just let the IPA sit on the top of the just let the IPA sit on top of the PS, back of the PS3. Let it do its job, let it soak in, loosen up the adhesive, and then you can go in there with your knife and start on a corner and slowly slice across the sticker lengthwise and repeat the steps, but take your time. Try not to cut the sticker at the same time. I know it's a, ba it's a balancing act, you know, but it's, it's time consuming. But after you remove the sticker and the machine's been painted up, you can always put the sticker back on and it's original. Yeah, this sticker is a, a lot, uh, takes some time to remove, so just take your time. It took me a long time to remove my head of that sure.
I did remove the sticker, but I've left two bits of the sticker on there. Small, small stuff. So, take your time. Don't rush it, and you will get it off for one, for one piece. So we're going to start taking out the screws on the ridge right. We're starting with the bottom first. There's two long ones on the back of the PS3 blue ridge drive, and there's three screws in a triangle configuration. These screws are the same. The two in the back of the drive here are the long ones that bite into metal. The three ones that bite into metal are the ones that bite into plastic. And now we're taking out the three screws on top. These are different from the ones you took out on the bottom. These are the flat pan hit style ones. Now we can take off the top of the, the shielding on top of the Blu-ray drive. As well as the Fingers, I accept the game disc and also the gears that pull in the disc. So most of this top shielding will be cut away and a very um, very little of the shielding will be left to see. But yeah. Don't forget to take off the 5 volt rail cord that goes to the main board on the PS3. Right now you see me there straighten out the wires so when you put it back on it looks very clean. 
and aesthetically pleasing. Taking off the bottom shielding, that exposes the daughter board. So the daughter board controls the, the Blu-ray drives a spin motor that spins at the disc, also controls the worm gear, and also the that switch position sensor, and also the, the gear drive that drives the gears to raise and lower the tray, and also accept disc and eject disc. Also, it does the encryption data for the PS3. So right now, we're going to start taking out the top of the PS3 Blu-ray drive. There's two screws on the top. These screws are the same ones that you took out on the bottom, the bottom three in that triangle configuration. Same ones. So after the two screws are removed, you, you detent these clips here. Then you can remove the top from the top platter of the drive. And you put this off to the side. I'm putting this off to the side in the sink. Now, you know, as you notice, one arm is mechanized. It has gears. And one arm is not. On the launch models of the PS3s, both sides had gears to accept disc parallel into the machine at the drive. Sony uh, did some revisions and cut back on this, so it accepts one arm is uh, mechanized, so it, one arm will spin the disc into the machine, and uh, when it ejects it, it spins it out, if you haven't noticed. My guess is Sony couldn't spend the money. I want to save some money and not having all these little gears in their drives. Right now I'm scrubbing out the top platter there on the drive, making sure I get in between the gears, the little uh, double sided feet here that, that clasp onto the disc as it comes in and out. Give it a rinse off. 
I won't be taking the drive apart in this video. That'll be the next one. And I'll take apart all the springs. Take off all the springs, the fingers, the, the clasp that catches the disc, and also the eject arm. You can see my son imitating my motion with uh, flinging the water off uh, of the drive of the top platter there. Now I'm disconnecting the, the daughter board from the bottom half of the drive there. Pulling out the verb gear uh, motor ripping cable and also taking out the motor ripping cable that spins up the disc. And also the switch position sensor slash gear feed. And uh, you should, after you do that, you should flip it over a disconnected laser from the top side of the, the drive, which I didn't do, and now I do. It's a little clip there that pulls up. Just use your fingernail to pop it up and pull up the cable, then go back to the back. Detent the clip there. And the clip is, uh, the daughter board will come off the, underneath the housing of the drive. And you'll be free to remove it. I did notice on here that someone has been inside this drive before. Because the, the ribbon cable for the laser is put on backwards. The small strip goes towards the daughter board, the long strip goes towards the laser. Just how it goes. Now I'm taking out the hard drive caddy from the, the bottom side there. So there's four screws there that have their pan heads that's great into the hard drive bottom shell there. And then also These are different between from the other ones you've been taking out. So I set them off to the side so you don't lose track of them. Right now I'm taking I'm doing the the screw on a switch position sensor and also the screws on the gear feed on the bottom half of the shell. And also I'll be taking out the one of the gears. A screw on it and the secondary gear there so I can pull out the, the gear feed motor and also the switch position sensor so the gear feed has two screws the switch position sensor has one
I'm putting the screws back in that I took out from the gear feed and switch position sensor as well as the, the gear that I took out with the screw on it so I don't lose track where I went to. Now that all the electronics have been removed from the bottom shell of that disc, the Blu-ray drive, I can uh, put those away and it gave the bottom shell a uh, scrub down. Now I'm using hot soapy water to scrub down the gears and the bottom shell of the Blu-ray drive. Now rinsing it off. Scrubbing down the bottom half of the shielding for the Blu-ray drive. Scrubbing down the magnetic uh, clasping uh, lamp that sits on top of the Blu-ray drive.
Now the parts we rinse, rinsed off, I can do my special Now we're going to work on the power supply. Right now, I'm undoing this little clips on the side of the power supply. You push in, pull away from the power supply. Start from the away from the fan intake vent on the power supply. And work your way to the fan side of the power supply.
there is a blue component there that's it's when I push against the little clip there, the tends it to release it. The components in the way, so it is hard to. Right now, I'm putting some little bit of force on there. I'm pushing in hard. It's a hard one. Looking at the power supply here, and it looks pretty clean, not too dirty. It looks like it's been blowing off a few times, but you still got that tarry residue on there from uh, Smoker's Home. So it is what it is. I'm gonna use some uh, IPA to rinse down. Use my uh, wife's toothbrush to scrub it, give it a good scrub down.